how you doing i'm so glad you're here welcome today we're going to be talking about control codes coverage and silvers so heads up you know the drill wipe off wipe on wipe off clean it off real nice i'm using a uh, prime wash I'm using Torque uh, towels, the ones that are working for me now. I might change my mind later on. Who knows? I'm always changing to see what works best for me at the moment and what's um, working good. So I lay down a coat of sealer on these bumpers. I'm putting on the first coat of base. When you put sealer on, you probably notice that you can put a little bit more base on the first coat. Um, that's okay. Like the sealer, it's like the perfect substrate for the base coat. So you can actually put a little bit more base to begin with. That is, for example, now I am not putting that much on. You can see that um, it's still see-through. You can still see the primer underneath. And yeah, so the first coat I put it on generally light so you can see right through it. Some guys have problems with the base separating when you put it on too heavy. So there's my first coat. I'm, I tacked this whole job. I usually don't tack full panels that I'm basing, but this was a bigger job. So I wanted to see and, and uh, tack it because some guys are getting strikes and, and streakiness and stuff like that when they're tacking their base. So I wanted to, to try it for myself and make sure that everything was good. I, I would probably recommend tacking your first coat after that, on a full refinished panel, I wouldn't tack it just in case it might streak and also there might be spots that are not dry. So this is my second coat. You can see I'm going a little bit farther in that blend. Um, so I, I, I know some people reverse blend and do all different kinds of blends. And I, I want, I'm going to try, I wanna make some videos on that. I wanna see if I can get that to work apparently it, it works great so i'm putting on a third coat of base now and i'm putting it on just as wet as i was with my second coat of base when it comes to silvers and you're refinishing a full panel like this you want you want to get coverage on there because if you don't you're just seeing through the metallics you're seeing through the paint and all you're seeing is what's underneath and with this high metallic paint coats um you know, there's not very much pigment on there. It's not very much pigment. So you're seeing right through them because you're seeing right through those metallics. So as you can tell, my, my, my blend there, you can tell I'm angling it in a way that, you know, that it's going to be easier to blend, that it's going to be easier to lose it. Because your eyes always want to look for, for problems. Your eyes always want to look for what's wrong with something. So if you angle it like that, you're, you will, you will trick your eye and it'll, and it'll look, it'll look better. You obviously have to lay down a good blend. You obviously have to make sure you're keeping the color contained. You want to remember, we talked about the balloons of water in, in my other videos. You want to throw the balloon towards the repair so you can stay away from those, uh, from the edges of your blend panels. So that's my control coat now. I put three medium wet coats. So, sorry, one light coat, two medium wet coats for coverage. If you need more, you gotta do more. But for this color, it, two was enough. Now I dropped my pressure down to 16 or so. And um, um, so you can tell I'm going faster and my overlap is quite a bit. I would have to say my overlap is probably 80%. If you wanna do more overlap, that's fine. And if you're wondering what an 80% overlap is, is the distance. So uh, the higher the percentage, the closer you're going to do an overlap. An overlap is when you see me go from side to side, I go from side to side closer and closer to each, each stroke. So I'm getting closer and closer to each stroke. So the strokes are closer together. So I'm doing a double control coat. So what you do is you go over the panel once, you go to the end of the panel and then you work your way up again, which whatever you're doing. So as you can tell, I'm, toward, I'm painting towards the left. 
So I'm going towards that fender. Obviously, the fender's not there, but I'm going towards that fender, and that blend will disappear. And remember what I told you guys. If the silver looks a tiny little bit darker, that that's that's what you want when when you're when you're uh, blending. If it looks too light, then it's gonna look really light when you clear it, because once you put clear on silver, it dark it darkens. As you can uh, as you could see in my my Instagram stories, I posted clear visor a clear visor from my Sata hood there. I cut it in three pieces and I showed how when you have that clear visor that's obviously clear, you put another piece on top of the the uh, the other piece it would look darker then you put another piece on top of it and it looked even darker so when you have two coats of clear three coats of clear it makes it a lot darker and you could see a lot of in those light colors when you're blending even in the blends you have to be careful that you're sanding them properly because if you don't you're going to have a buildup of clear and then you're stuck with a really really dark panel and you're going to say what the heck i didn't even put any color there but it's because of the amount of clear that has been put on there. So regardless what you do, the, the, the silvers, even on the blend panels, they are going to look darker. I mean, it might not be noticeable to the customer, but I mean, I notice them. And and if you know what you're looking for, you'll notice them. But it's not a deal breaker. It's I mean, it's it's just the way it is when you clear. You could just put one coat of clear on the blend panels, but then you're stuck polishing too much. And, you know, that's it's not good. So control code, I always try to move faster and I have, I always try to make sure that I'm not putting it on wet. So if you're seeing, if you're seeing too much, uh, wetness, you need to back off, right? Or just continue putting that wet coat on and then go back and do a, a control coat because if you don't, then you're going to get modeling and if you're going to get, uh, you're going to get tiger striping and all that stuff and you don't want that so now i'm using a, a pro light i wanted to i wanted to try it out for clear i personally didn't like it i felt like it was slowing me down i had to go really slow in order for it to lay down properly i was using uh the pro light 1.2 with a t20 cap for base and then i was using a 1.3 with a e20 cap for clear and I found that it was it was tougher to spray. Like it for I'm using uh, PPG and Virobase EC530 clear, and this clear for some reason it it just lays down really nice with the Iwata that I use on a regular basis. But for for just I wanted to try it out. I tried it with the Pro Light, so I was very happy with this job. Um, I'll put a picture at the end of this video. After I was done baking, I found a little spider right on the side of the hood there and it ticked me off. But I was able to I was able to polish it off because it, it landed on there, I guess, during the bake cycle. So I was able to sand it off with some 1500 and so and polish it right off. So, I mean, with silvers are tricky. Silvers are really tricky sometimes. You get them, sometimes you don't. But, you know... I don't believe that there's such a thing as a perfect paint job. If somebody claims that, good for them. I will never claim that. I will never claim that, you know, I've done a perfect paint job. If you wanted to find something wrong with this paint job, you will find it. Trust me. I can guarantee you. Um, But here's the deal. You must always try your best when you're doing these jobs. Pretend is, you know, somebody dear, somebody that you love every time you're painting a car because that's the only way that you can personally get better and you can personally reward yourself knowing that you did the best you could on that job. I remember uh, a Honda S2000 gave me such a headache. I had to do this car three times and because the, the, the color was uh, off and the customer wasn't happy and you know it was model because I couldn't get it. And you know what, after that car, I'm so grateful for that car now because it taught me about coverage, it caught, taught me about modeling, and now I'm constantly, constantly trying to push myself to get better finishes, to get better paint jobs. Not so I can brag about it, so I can tell myself, hey, you're trying your best. So there you have it, there you go. 
it turned out really nice. Um, I mean, I was I was very happy with it. I was happy with the blend. I was happy with the 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 lay down of the base. It, it turned out to be a a great job. So I was I was really happy with it. I hope this video was helpful. Um, I'm almost up to 300 subscribers here on YouTube, and you have no idea how grateful I am for that. You have no idea how much that means to me. I make this video so you can learn. I'm not one to keep secrets to myself about how to get nice paint jobs or anything like that. I want people to learn. I want new guys to be inspired. I knew I want new guys to be motivated. I want people that have been painting for 40 years to be motivated to become better painters because that's the bottom line. When when the tide rises, all ships rise with it. So I encourage you guys to please share this video. Please share my YouTube channel. Go follow me on Instagram. There's some really cool videos that I'm I spend a lot of time on Instagram. Some people think I'm I'm dumb for doing that. But I just I want to provide value. I want to provide like I want you to learn and be entertained at the same time so you could find value in the videos that I make. So if you would do me a huge favor, please like this video, please share this video, subscribe to the channel, and please follow me on Instagram. It would mean the world to me. And please say hi. I have I have tried to say hi to each and every single person that follows me on Instagram. So if you follow me on there, you'll probably uh, get a message from me personally saying thank you for the follow because I, honestly, I appreciate it. I never knew that, you know, I was going to grow that account so much. But there you have it. There's that little bugger that I was able to polish out because it was on top. So anyways, take care. God bless. See you next time.